Matt McNerney uh, from Great Pleasures. long day of interviews today so just talking about the album and talking about great pleasures for a day the release date feels kind of arbitrary when we've been working on it for so long and uh, you know we've had a build up with the singles and everything so uh, it, it's kind of I, I guess the the release date isn't as important as, uh, um, as, as sort of like when we finish the work um, it was about six years in the making, so it's, uh, it's, it's been a long time, so, so I, I kind of feel like it's already out there. Um, of course, it, it will be just interesting to hear when people start to, to listen to the record and what they, they, they have to say about it. Like we started working on it before that, we, we, we've been working on it since after Mother Blood, the last record came out, and I guess that uh, it just took as long as it took. Um, and I think it was all the better for it that it took uh, it took as long as it needed to to, to be um, the album that it is. I think had it come out sooner, it maybe would have been a different record. So, so I think I think it was good, and uh, in many ways, the pandemic just did us a favor in um, slowing the horses down a little bit, and we we just gave ourselves a little more time to to perfect the record and. Uh, so, yeah, I think so. Um, I think there was this uh, feeling when we started making the record, uh, a political uh, kind of aspect, and I think um, kind of the the um, disenfranchised feeling uh, of, of being powerless uh, as to what was playing out in the world. And I think even to this point, I, I think um, now that it's got to this point, you realise that it couldn't have gone any other way, and this is. Where, it, where the world has been leading. So I think the sort of despondency that, that's been growing um, amongst you know, people who are reading what, what's actually going on in the world is, is, is um, so, so palpable that we wanted to, to tap into that in a sound uh, way that, that uh, we wanted it to sound very heavy but in a very non-traditionally heavy way. Um, and of course there's, that's it's always a very difficult thing but it's uh, exploring heaviness uh, in, in terms of space and distance, uh, reverbs and um, uh, kind of like the, the sound aspect as being an instrument in itself rather than uh, you know relying on kind of riffs and heavy guitars and things like that so, so it was sort of like uh, how far could we stretch the the aspect of rock rock uh, in this in this way and I, and I think that there's not really many bands um, making such a sort of like um, uh, poignant kind of uh, social commentary um, as, as that so, so in that way I feel like it's very fresh it's very modern mm. rather than relying on this sort of like influences from other eras or anything like that and I don't know what happened to rock music and punk in general, but mm. it feels like people are afraid because there's very little subject matter to discuss without sort of walking into a minefield of, of um, you know, what's wrong or right socially now. So, so, so people are kind of afraid of, of sticking their fingers up at anything or anyone or, or talking about anything, you know. So, so I, I just, I, I really want to, I, I want, I think uh, rock should be dangerous um, and I don't think it should be uh, friendly hippie bearded polyester shirt rock and roll 70s uh, you know stoner rock I, I think it should be about what's happening now and I, I really want uh, wanted this uh, Plague Boys record to be like what's happening now and the, the title came from before the pandemic but it's sort of like as the pandemic rolled on it, it, it really became uh, even more uh, meaningful uh, and so so for, for me it sort of like encapsulates what's happened between now and you know six years ago which it, it was a completely different world uh, well it's just I, I think it's just it's just there you know it's there in, in who I am uh, and um, what we are as a band I think uh, I think it's just there it's, it's not like something we we have to conjure it just sort of it, it, it comes with the territory so um, you know there's there's always been this feeling that, that when people listen to the songs like you can't say that you know you can't call a song be my Hiroshima or something like that but I always think that you know in, in, in treading the borderlines between what is sort of like humoristic or ironic uh, and, and what, what is you know sort of like uh, an actual like uh, comment on something that's happening is, 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 a, is where the interesting danger lies in music you know we say it's dangerous but 
I think it's just because we dare to tread on, on the yeah on the, the areas where you're not supposed to go. And I, I think it gave it a different atmosphere as well because Mother Blood has a sort of angry punk energy um, that I think is is, is quite optimistic. Um, and I think that the the sort of darker, sadder sides of Plague Boys. Um, kind of uh, manifests differently uh, and gives the, the sort of like the more upbeat, um, almost sort of anthem esque side of the album another counterpoint. So, so that it, it, when it dip, dips into the darker, deeper sides of the record, um, it goes very, very dark, very personally dark, I think, than Mother Blood went. I think Mother Blood is very much. Uh, quite a yeah it's, it's more of an upbeat record uh, than, than playboys it's a more melancholic contemplative record maybe maybe at the time when it came out uh, i wouldn't have conceived of how we could put together a kind of concept of uh, the new record but um but but I, I think it's a good thing it's always a good thing to have a reaction uh, and a reactionary record i think we thrive on that that's sort of part of the modus operandi of the band it's it's grave pleasures you know it's it's the it's the the the, the dark and the light it's the these this contrast all the time so i think we thrive on on making a reaction to the last thing that we've done and, and so um it was really good to have mother blood as a springboard for where we could go as a band and i think that plague boys is is, is sort of like uh, it's we're really taking we know what grave pleasures is but we're taking it uh, uh, in, into ways that you may have never heard from the band before and so you know people who listen to the record say oh it's really it, it sounds like you guys but i've never heard this from you guys before you know and and i think that's a really brave but but the right thing to do um rather than just churning out the same record which is you know uh considering the label that we're on there's a lot of bands you know in the, in the extreme metal world that just do the same record mm. again and again because it's what the fan base want and i think from our perspective we we um we don't. We've never really cared about that. So, so um, we have nothing to lose in a way. There, so, so. It, it, it has a concept, um, but it, but it's not. Uh, it, it's not a concept album in, in terms of uh, you know only working in, in a sort of certain certain way. I, I think there, there are very different songs on the record, uh, and, and I think it, it allows itself to be um, a, a different record on different tracks, if you like. Um, so, so it's, it's, it's always difficult because when you say concept record, you think of like these sort of prog or odyssey yeah. uh, <laughs> records, which are sort of like you know it, 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 they they have to be consumed in a certain way. You know, Dark Side of the Moon is, is its own thing. It, it's not like that. Um, I think this is just uh, the sound of a band really stretching its wings. You know, a band that knows what it is, uh, that has the freedom to, to sort of fly now. You know, and and it's just taking off, if you like, uh, to use a sort of. Uh, a, a, a metaphor in that in that way that I, I think we're very sure of uh, of what great pleasures is and it really is the, the band the, the sound is really based on the, the last record I think that's when we came really into being so in a way for me this is just the second record um, it's also the second record of our contract in a way so it's sort of like you know everything started with mother blood and before that it, it, for me is just sort of like a testing ground and, and, mm -hmm. and everything so so I, I think of great pleasures uh, as, as um, this this lineup and uh, the, the plague boys is perhaps sort of like the first step into a new uh, world where, where, uh, where we, we are kind of more free in, in a way in that uh, me and y uh, Yuho and Alexi all wrote for this album so for Mother Blood it was mainly uh, Yuho uh, make you know um, originating the music on the guitars and, and things and, and then me adding my vocal layers and Alexi wrote a couple and I wrote one on the last on Mother Blood but this record I think I wrote um, you know maybe 40 percent of the stuff was originated by me some stuff originated from Alexi and some from Yuho and Yuho took over the pr producer role so he had a kind of different role than just a writer uh, on this record and I think that's the sort of important difference is yeah. that uh, yeah. it, it was kind of um, produced from within the band um, and a lot of different writing came in and I, I think you can hear that on the record that it's it's sort of like great pleasures from s different angles um, and each one of us is so sure of what it is that we're doing now with the band that I think we can 
we can really explore uh, our own vision of, of what the band should be, but all bring those songs to the table. And we worked on them together in different ways. So if I would bring a song, sometimes it was just some ideas and the other guys helped me to, to, to bring those into a song. And sometimes it was the full fledged song. And the same with um, you, if you would have a sort of, um, you know, like a fully realized song and I would just add the vocal lines and stuff. So it was a very different way of writing um, from song to song. And I think you could hear it on the album. It's quite diverse, uh, in, 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 and all the better, better for it in that way. I will say, like, not to minimise what um, uh, Raiku does on the drums, and uh, he's he's very much involved in, in sort of like arranging those ideas and coming up with with how to to make the drums on those uh, those songs. And, and and the same with Valtteri on the bass. That that they were so much more free on this record to bring what they could into the band. So, so I, I, I don't know, it's, it, just, it just feels like now we are really getting to our on our feet when it comes to writing. And those six years were very, very well used uh, in that, that we um, really sort of like, uh, we, we wrote in those, uh, those years. And, and it's often stuff that we talk about. So I think that the, the video for High on Annihilation was something that we, we talked a lot about in the studio and as we were working on the track. That these were the visuals that we were getting and I think other bands they allow video directors to come in and um, have their own interpretation on things and then some some are, are a little bit too on the nose uh, but it's, it's I think that with us it's just like we, we have this very um, kind of um, for, very like well-formed vision of how everything should go so so I, I'm, I'm unable to really let anybody else have some like control over the, the visual image of the band I really want to be involved and so so I have some very like strong ideas of how the video should look and um, so so with, with the all of the videos for this album uh, I've had a, like an, an idea of what I, what I would like we've been lucky to work with somebody like uh, David Fitt who's been able to kind of uh, con you know conceive those 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 ideas and really bring them to life and, um, Tekla, of course, who did the cover, uh, her world and her atmosphere is, is very much part of, of um, what she, she feels like someone on, mm. in the band, you know, because we, with the last record also, Mother Blood, was a, was a very well uh, worked uh, cover and, and, and also now, now she had more freedom to work on the cover, but I think all things, the cover, the video, everything, it, it should, for us, it, it needs to be part of the same world. Um, and and so so that's all part of the art. It's a part of the album, um, and I think it's becoming more and more important. Um, I mean, the idea of having a whole movie around the album and a whole set of videos for every song and things like that—that's something I would like. Uh, to do. We're very free with uh, Century Media. We, we're a different band for them, um, and you know we always will be. Uh, and, and so so they're they're very much um, they, they they just want to help us. Um, realize the vision and I think they trust in that it's a good label in that way so so we, we talked about the singles and they were like what sing you know what do you what do you want they gave their input we did listen quite a lot this time and I think that's, that's a, a good thing you, when you have an album you know you need to let people listen and then you need to uh, understand what what songs touch other people so I think the first song being Society of Spectres it wasn't my first first choice but I understand that I, I uh, you know, need to need to think about what, how other people hear the album. But that was one song that stuck out to people, and so it was like, okay, let's let's put it out. And, and now it is there. It's like that's that was exactly the right choice. So I, I think when it comes to deciding singles, that's um, you know, some some bands think that they have the best call on that. You don't always have the best idea. You sort of like, well, you know, it could be this one or this one. Um, you, you narrow it down. But in our case, I think on Plague Boys, it could have been any song because they're, they're all quite strong songs in their own mm. right. I don't think we, we just don't do filler stuff on albums. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, fillers, the whole concept of them was, you know, it was a, it's an outdated thing. Yeah. It, was, it, was, it was because of, uh, you know, filling up time on records and, and so on. And, you know, it, the, the industry worked in a different way with the format. But, uh, but we, we just want to make as many good songs as we can, on, you know, with the limited time that we have. Um, that is something that uh, I trust comes together as you start working on the record. So, so uh, it, it really starts to flow um, the more you work into it. And I never worried about that because it always comes. And I, um, 
the way that I look at music is that I see it as a as its own being, uh, and the music uh, you nurture it like a child, uh, and then you release it to the world, and it and it has to exist on its on its own. Uh, and if you detach from your art in that way, that that it is a being which you should um, you should you know you should listen to, and you should understand, and 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 not not think of it as something you control and manipulate, and you you can destroy, but like uh, something that lives on its own feet. Uh, in that way, I, I think the album decides how it's going to go. And if you're very intuitive with your art, you, you understand like how an album should flow. It's a journey, and so so it's um it's not easy because it's you know we're having lots of different people writing together at the same time. You you um you know it's not necessarily that things are going to go smoothly. But we we we're so experienced now. And we're not a young band that I think we just you know you intuitively know how how the, the process should go. But it's really important that an album should flow. Like an album and a lot of people don't really think about that nowadays because it's you know digital and so on but I, I strongly believe in the format I think there's a there's, a, there's an attention span uh, which is a, a you know it's a set amount of time and that's a scientific thing and and uh, we, we you know we concentrate that amount of time it's it's sort of uh, it, it's set now that uh, that we, we we have these this this album time and uh, I think it's important that you think of that as a journey that people commit to and listen to and I like to do that I like to listen offline I like music you know in the car on a CD player or I like to listen on an iPod where I'm not going to skip on, mm. on Spotify and yeah. so on and I think if you really truly love music that's something you need to try to do um, I think a, a really um, upbeat song uh, I think that the, the idea of Disintegration Girl I think maybe was because it's quite familiar and in a way it's like um, almost like you know Mother Blood continued and, and then and then we jump off somewhere else so so in a way you, you start with something a little bit more familiar and then you throw people into the deep end mm. so so that was the idea that I think Disintegration Girl had a certain aspect of you know some some mother blood past some some little nods to beast milk maybe even from the past and then you and then you really just go into a new world the world of you know plague boys so i like that where you, you have a sort of continuation point um you know you, you bring in the familiar as aspects and then you go somewhere else but it's a good opener it sort of blasts the the thing open before you get to the more melancholic and, and deeper parts of the album we just sound like us um, mm. and, and it's it's a, it's a strange thing that you can have different equipment um, you can be in different situations but it, we're always going to sound like us and that's that's something i think that keeps the band together also that you know it's these five guys so uh, and, and we've agreed that as well because we've had a few lineup changes from from the you know the beginning of the band and dream crash to now um that this is the band and uh, we don't want to change it um because we sound like us uh, always uh, and, and and so so that, that's a unique thing uh, it's not something to take lightly it's, it's something i think that when you're younger you, you do take lightly because um you know you have all this time in the world you also you know young is so optimistic about how you're just gonna oh i'm gonna meet another i'll meet another guy there's so many guys who play music it's like you you you, you we really realize now that this is a very unique thing when you find people that you can really connect with so um, Great Puss has become a bit like that it's, it's, some, it's a sort of brotherhood that we rely on also I think um, sort of in, in some sort of um, spiritual connection with our music that we, we need this uh, and, and so that's a good feeling. So I think there's going to be these release shows that we have coming up next week um, and then uh, a couple of festivals and I'm not sure what else at the moment because the world is a bit weird, um, and it's a bit hard to get out there. Uh, so, so we're gonna we're gonna see. We're not in a terrible rush with Mother Blood. We did a lot of shows immediately, and we kept doing shows. And it was like by the time we were done doing shows, people were just starting to get into the album. Uh, it took a while. You know, it, it takes a while. I think these days for music to to get out there for people to start listening, um, especially at our level, you know, the marketing is kind of word of mouth. And I think with the new record as well, it's, it's, it's not something very instant. Um, it draws, it, it demands a bit of uh, attention. So I think that by next year, we will start to play a little bit more and maybe we'll be a bit more selective about where we play and be a sort of more special uh, act in that way. But 
we, we're kind of band that we, we just pick up our instruments up and we start playing together. We have that magic, so it, it's not going to go away just because uh, we're not playing every every week. But uh, I don't know. It's it's, a, it's it's like COVID and the war and everything else has made playing live a mm. very difficult thing. And, yeah, is it tricky for you guys to book shows as well? Yeah, so. it's just really expensive. It's like yeah. to get out of Finland is like a thousand five hundred to book a bunch of flights at the minimum uh, so you're looking at a couple of grand just to get out somewhere um, you know for one show it's it's a lot of money so um, you know when, and, and then when touring night liners buses everything is extremely expensive now so yeah. <laughs> so this is all stuff that people who just go to shows don't really think about they don't, they don't then they shouldn't they shouldn't have to you know care about the, the burden of being a musician but it's, it surely isn't the uh, you know the rock and roll lifestyle that people imagine it is yeah, and then there's a lot of business around this merch cuts and then yeah, <laughs> so like and, and, and I never, I never dreamt about growing up to be a merch salesman. You know, yeah, I just like doing music. So, so I, I think um, I want to try to enjoy that that aspect. So, if I play less shows, but I, I I'll enjoy them just just as much. You know, as as playing a lot, uh, but, uh, that where there's more hassle, if you know what I mean. Many people believe that we're all in these bad deals and that they need to buy direct from the band or anything like that. We have a good deal with a record label and everything is good. You know, we, we, we're, not, we're, we're not unhappy to be working with them. So if people buy the record, however they can buy it, it's all good you know, mm. for us. So. Yeah.